avsnitt av Förändra framtiden med oss på Historielabbet och idag så ska vi träffa Parvin Erdalan som har jobbat med det här projektet som heter Women Making Her Story och vi ska alldeles strax sticka bort till henne och intervjua henne om det här projektet. Vad är det vi kommer att prata om idag Karin tror du? Mm. Uh, Women Making Her Story är ju ett uh, insamlande av uh, och synliggörande av uh, migrantkvinnors historia i Malmö och speciellt arbetande migrantkvinnors historia. Så vi kommer att höra om projektet men också framförallt hur det gick till. Mm. Hur gick de tillväga för att skapa det här som till slut blev en, en bok? Och det vi säkert kommer att höra henne berätta om är dels hur de fick tag på de här kvinnorna, hur man gjorde intervjuerna. Men det var ju väldigt många institutioner och personer som jobbade i det här projektet. Hur gör man när man samarbetar? Mm. Så vi ska låta sexika bort så det vill bara göra sig i ordning och dricka upp kaffet. Hej och välkomna till femte avsnittet av Förändra eh, framtiden. Och idag ska vi träffa Parvin Ardalan. Hej, Hej. välkommen. Tack. Eh, och vi ska prata om ditt projekt eh, Women Making History. Hi, uh, my name is Parvin Ardalan, as you mentioned. Uh, I have worked uh, with a project, uh, Women uh, Making uh, History, that uh, gradually became to a process as a woman making her story. Mm. We will start off with asking a very general question, which is open and big, but why was it important to do a project like this? Because uh, Uh, when I came to Malmo, uh, when I was, uh, first of all, I was a free start for Fattore in Malmo uh, from 2010 to 2012. And my background is as a journalist, women activist, and I have uh, worked and studied uh, women study journalism in my country. And then here also, uh, I try to use this kind of knowledge that I had uh, when I was here. And... Uh, uh, Being in Malmo and see the number of the population, like uh, more than 170 uh, nationalities, and uh, to see to be an activist and focusing on the gender issue. So for me, it was questioning that. So, uh, what is the history of the women that they have migrated to this country? I identified myself as an immigrant and now have moved from another country to another country. So, that, so it, I just wanted to know that what's happened to the history of this women and what have done how, when women came here. At the beginning, it was just to, uh, the meaning was to collect the story and to exhibit it in the Malmö Museum, but it changed to uh, the three years uh, process, communication with different women, with civil society, and uh, to discuss about the invisibility of uh, mm. uh, women. So the first step for us, it was an um, opening meeting at the library, the Stats Bibliothek, and uh, we invited uh, uh, all of the organizations and also individuals that we had some connection and network uh, to come and to discuss about the starting point. From experience it could be sometimes hard to collect stories and mm -hmm. reach out to the people that you mm -hmm. are looking for, um, mm -hmm. especially immigrant women who might not mm -hmm. feel connected to the society in that way and it might be hard to reach out to them. Like, How did you go about finding them and how did you go about collecting their their stories. Well, we just uh, had a very a pilot project at the beginning and we started to interview with some of the women but it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Close it. Why? Why? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. uh, because uh, one of the reason was that uh, we just started with some of the questions. So mm. what who should I ask? What should I? It was not it it, it was it didn't work because uh, most of the questions come from you where are you come from? What did you do? What happened mm. to you and something like that. So and uh, the another one of the problem was that uh, most of the interview at, uh, was in Swedish language. Mm. 
And the, another part was that uh, it was uh, the parallel of to being in the interview, how we can interview with people in an equal situation. Yeah. It didn't work. Uh, in a project group, we decided to have a workshop meeting and to start with uh, some kind of uh, very general question mm. and not a specific question about everybody. For example, you can talk about your life, about your education, yeah. your work, the area of your family, something yeah. that people would like to explain, yeah. not to push people to answer to several specific questions mm. to you. And uh, one of them told me that uh, people come to, to us and then they want an interview and then they go and yeah. it's finished. So, and I don't like to be interviewed several times. People look at us like a project, mm. but not as a reality, real person. So it was some of the things that discussed about that. And uh, gradually we found our way. Because one of the questions that all the time people ask us is, so what happened to you that you came? Hmm. But 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 they didn't ask you that. So what happened to you after you were staying here? So how did you? Because there is, uh, as you said, a lot of projects where you, where people ask them for interviews and ask mm -hmm. them to, mm -hmm. to share their story and mm -hmm. and to be and then after that, you just leave and, and mm -hmm. people, just want that kind of information. How did you? Did you feel like you found a way to get around that so people don't yeah. be left with that feeling? Like no, that? exactly. Because uh, uh, I is in my background, one of my, my background is that the activism in the movement, women movement, and one of the activities that we had, it was that how mobilize women. And uh, I use this kind of model for, for engaging women and uh, this it means that how we can use the participatory mm. activities if i wanted to interview with you how you can be a part of the activities in future plan and in future future activities then then it you not only be interviewed but also you will be a part of the uh, process of activities mm. so it was something that we try to do for example, I interviewed with some of the women, but they interviewed also themselves with another person. Mm. And then we, met, we changed the place. For example, one of the important things at the beginning was that because we started with the museum, so it was better to start everything and every meeting at the museum. But it didn't work because you have to go to the place that people yeah. are living. You had your workshops and uh, the discussions and interviews and uh, what then came came out of that? Uh... So the first year we tried to have a, some kind of communication and knowing each other and t discussing about the issues and also um, having some different workshops. And the second year it was a modern museum that uh, wanted to have an exhibition. Mm. Uh, one of other one of the platform was the. Uh, exhibition at Malmo Museum. Uh, one of the platform was the different uh, kind of uh, workshop and seminars that we had in different areas that documented mm -hmm. through the newsletters of the uh, woman making uh, woman making history. And uh, the final one was the the book mm -hmm. woman making her story that it was a. Uh, collecting, not collecting everything. It was just to show that what we did yeah. during these three years. As you said, there was a lot of people and organizations involved. There was the, the university, OBF, the museum, it was the Malmö city. It was a lot of different uh, organizations involved. What is the advantage and disadvantage of being so many people in a project and so many organizations with? This? So uh, one of it is uh, it takes longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people like to finish everything very soon. Yeah. You know, but we, we couldn't finish it no. soon because we have to open the folder. You know, it, when you open something, so you have to just. Uh, starting to uh, questioning and analyzing. For for me, it was like a, the platform was a movement, and I just wanted to questioning this. Yeah. But um, but it's very difficult because to collect people in a one around the one table and to discuss it was so 
sometimes I can say that it was some different opinion, sometimes it could be some conflict, or sometimes mm -hmm. it could be some kind of fighting. So it means that <laughs> it's not very easy. No. And uh, but I think it's very important because the if especially when you work with institutions and institutions are very very conservative in their work, so it means that uh, you have to be you have to be part of the institution or you have to just have an intervention yeah. on that institution area. So I think this kind of activities was, was a kind of intervention that good, had a good benefit for all of mm. us because we, we learned how we can work together. If any other person would like to, to start a project mm. and uh, do uh, collaborations, what would be your best uh, tip tips <laughs> Tip, no. yeah. Yeah. for for like uh, for advice. getting together advice yeah. yes <laughs> yes first of all i think that we have to have a uh, we cannot say that different we, can, we are different but we have to have at least similar uh, connection mm. with each other so i think that the important thing is that that just not to find some other partner as a like a collaborative no. idea first of all see that with who and how we can work and this is very important mm. and the other things that the, the looking up the looking at the people i think is very important that how we are working to each other because most of the question that we had in a different process that we had it was the questioning of a how mm. because most of the time we knew that what we want but yeah. we didn't know how we want and the most of the difference that we had it was just at that part the how the yeah, how and then if you know and so if you wanted to have some collaboration with other people and you wanted to start the project just take a look at that to see that how you are going to reach that day yeah so the important question is to uh, the important thing is to find that you have the same how to do you need a similar interests yes. Yes. of course in the project and you need you need to have a a similarity in ideas but the most yeah. important is to have the same how how to how. get there yes so most of the time people go and then they collect the stories but they don't want to see that how people would like to present their stories mm -hmm. as they want so i think that there are many things that they have been discussed but the how how they are discussed is important yeah this way i grade in more threads in like yes a... So like, like the work that we did, it was more intersectional form because yeah. there are many things that they are coming from different sides that and you have to take a look at what's going on. If you just go one way, so you don't see any other direction. And most of the things that I see when I came to Sweden and, and I see that uh, this specialized on one thing, focus on just one thing, is good, but in another way, you don't see your around other us. around yourself and then for this way is sometimes it's very difficult to to get hold the picture yeah. as a real picture is it still possible to get hold of the book yes there is still the book the, there is the book and there is the, the website mm -hmm. which is is uh, wonderful it's like you can go in there for hours just mm -hmm. looking at all the stories and reading thank you so much Var det något speciellt du tänkte på, Karin? Mm. Eh, att vara noggrann med, med platsens betydelse rent geografiskt. Var, att göra en analys. Var bor eh, de kvinnorna vi vill nå? Då lägger vi projektet där. Ja. Det är ju jätteviktigt. Inte bara lägga det på de här institutionerna som är med och arbetar, till exempel universitetet, museet. Ja, kanske finns en jättebra möteslokal på Malmö universitet. Men om alla måste åka buss i 30 minuter för att komma dit så är det inte så... Tillgängligt. Tillgängligt. Nej. Vad tänkte du på Sofia? Men jag tänkte väldigt mycket på hur man skapar rum för samtal. För det här var ett projekt som initierades för att man eh, vill att de här kvinnorna skulle berätta sina historier. Och då är det väldigt lätt att man vill komma fram till sin tes så fort som möjligt. Så man tänker att svara på de här frågorna så får vi de svaren vi vill ha. Och det märkte de ju ganska snabbt att det funkar inte på det viset. Utan man fick liksom tänka om och istället 
inte ställa specifika frågor utan faktiskt utgå från vad vill de här kvinnorna berätta om. Så man utgår från vad de vill berätta, inte vad man själv vill ha svar på. Och någonstans i den processen kanske man också får svar på sina frågor. Men då får man liksom lägga den här lilla extra tiden för att de först får berätta det från sitt perspektiv. Och lyssna in. Mm. Jätteviktigt perspektiv. Det är ju bara så oerhört inspirerande när någon eh, som parvin i det här fallet har sett att berättelsen är osynliga trots att det finns massa massa eh, arbetande eh, migrantkvinnor i Malmö så står det inte inga på, inte på några plaketter i Malmö inte på biblioteket men berättelserna finns inte trots att, att eh, kvinnorna finns det bara så inspirerande när det blir till ett projekt för att synliggöra mm. att göra det osynliga synligt helt enkelt mm. eh. Nej, men någonting som vi också pratar ganska mycket om i vår podd, i alla fall det senaste ja. säsongen eh, av vår podcast är ju tid. För ett projekt där man involverar medborgare, deltagare. Att alla ska få en chans att säga till om mm. saker. Så krävs det tid. Tid är liksom A och O i sådana här projekt. Och i det här fallet så var det tre år som de jobbade med det här projektet. Och det är den tiden det tar för att skapa tillit förtroende, reflektion. reflektion, gemenskap och en demokratisk process. Så det är ytterligare ett sådant projekt där man kan se att tid faktiskt är viktigt och har spelat roll. Låt det ta tid. Mm.